Hey guys, Language Hacker here, and I want to get another comp out for you guys. I've been told recently about a fire comp hanging around, and I think someone got rank one on uh, the Europe ladder with it, so let's uh, dive in and take a look. Okay, let's dive into the comp. Um, before we hop in, I want to point out that Yellybug was the person who reached out to me and suggested I try this. Um, I don't know if they were the first one to build this sort of setup, and in theory, I thought about trying something like this as well with a couple of different mercenaries, but uh, they're the ones who reached out with me, and I think they are the, um, they got rank one on Europe with this, so um, take that into consideration, and uh, let's, cop, let's pop through and see what each of these um, mercenaries do. Let's start off with Antonidas. Antonidas, let's go through the ability, uh, abilities, fireball, deal damage. Flame Strike, AoE damage, sure. Fireball Storm, cast Fireball at a random enemy. Repeat for each fire ability of cast this turn. Okay, there's some potential there. Equipment, Fireball deals more damage. Circulative Flame, the AoE deals more damage. And Searing Pendant, Fireball Storm, cast Fireball at two random enemies, but has plus one cooldown. Okay. Um, I've been recommended to go with Cindercore Staff and basically have the setup as the opening three mercenaries are just looking to completely one-shot one to two heroes uh, on the other side. And because of that, you want Cinecore Staff to do some extra damage, which is nice because it's not the Task 7 one, so you don't have to grind as much. Ragnaros, uh, Protector, got some fire stuff going on as well. Magma Blast, deal damage, and if, it's, if there's a combo, you deal extra damage. And the single target. Die Insects, random, but higher damage, okay. And then Meteor on a cooldown, deal damage to one target and a little bit of damage to the adjacent one so it's kind of big as well let's check out the equipment passive plus fire damage and this this damage applies to all mercenaries on the field for you so this carries over to any other mercenaries you are using that have uh, fire spells sulfuros gain health and you characters can't be frozen and molten chlore uh, magma blast deals more damage and we have blazing rune because it synergizes with all the fire stuff we want to be doing makes sense Geddon, Baron Geddon. Another caster, heating up. Deal 11, your, your fire abilities are one speed faster next turn. Okay. A little bit of um, speed ramp, but not as much as we've seen in other comps. Inferno, deal eight damage to all enemies. And if it's a fire combo, deal another bit of damage on top of that. And I think both of these gain uh, the fire's damage buff from Ragnaros' equipment. Living Bomb, choose an enemy. If it takes damage this turn, deal 11 damage to it and its neighbors. So this is also kind of like pseudo AoE as long as something else is also hitting the target. Cool. Um, the opening wombo combo type thing seems to be Fireball on Antonidas, followed up by Magma Blast from Ragnaros, which are two single target spells, and then Geddon's Inferno. And that together should knock out any protector on the opposing side of the field. Or if there's a... Um, if there is a fighter you want to take out instead, you can single target them with Ragnaros' Magma Blast, and that should also kill the fighter as well, um, or instead of the protector. So you get to choose which um, fighter protector you want to take out based on what comp you're up against. After that, we have some more familiar faces here, Karen, Lich King, Diablo, which we've seen in a few other videos, so I'm not going to go too into depth on them. But basically, after one of your units dies, you want to throw in either Cairn, Lich King, or Diablo. I've been personally favoring Cairn just to, as soon as uh, one of you guys gets knocked out, set up the speed control and set up for Lich King and Diablo to come down after the next unit dies. And the speed control also means that you can get a little bit of extra damage out of the remaining two um, fire, uh, either casters or protectors you have left over between Tony, Geddon, and Rag. Other than that, Lich King is there for some uh, speed control as well. Got some healing or burst and a bit of taunt. And Diablo, we've seen a few other builds as well. Kind of slow, but together with Cairn, you can do some nice combo fire stomp stuff. And that's actually relevant to note that this is a fire ability. I mean, it says fire stomp, but it's important to note that it can work with Ragnaros's fire damage buffs and Geddon's um, heating up speed buff, which means that it could theoretically be um, five speed or eight damage or more if you have fire stomp maxed. I actually don't have maxed yet. Um, and of course we have a pack apocalypse and doom charge so an attack and then like an ability kind of a ranged attack um, so these three aren't really uh, rocket science this is kind of uh, used in quite a few builds actually just have the speed control and then uh, your main sort of theme in which this case seems to be fire 
Oh, and before I forget, um, in terms of equipment for the bottom three, you probably want Reincarnation on Cairn. Well, that's what I've been using to make them a bit tankier. Uh, Lich King is Frostmourn, which means that the Frostbite um, speed control works on its neighbors as well, not just the main target. And for Diablo, I've been using Claws of Terror just to get some extra attack and some extra slow. But uh, for Diablo, you could kind of use any three of these. I've seen them. Um, I've seen kind of all of them used. I think Claws of Terror is a bit more standard. Lich King Frostmourne is pretty standard. And Karen, I think I've seen mostly Reincarnation because the other two are... Um, we're in a very caster-heavy meta, so having a bit more health to work with and making sure he doesn't get one shot is kind of important. Okay. Um, next up, I'll show you some games, so let's dive into that. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. If you have any comps you want to be seeing, let me know in the comments below, and I'll see what I can set, get set up for you guys. Happy grinding. Don't know. Playing three protector, one fighter, two caster. Could be orcs. Could be orcs. Could be fire as well. It's kind of what I've got going. So let's start with our... Classic opener, Antonidas get in rag and try to snipe out one of their characters right from the get-go. Looks like they're in the nature comp, which means that my rag dies immediately. I think we're unfavored in this. We'll give it a shot, but I think I am dead. I think most openers that start with two casters that can, that can nuke the rag fast enough will generally just close out the game. Um, and that, I mean, they have some sustain, which is what nature kind of does, but the fact that Rag dies immediately probably means we can't win from there. Because on turn two, Malfurion sticking means that they have nature speed, uh, or they have speed for their, actually, yeah, they have nature speed, which means that I will then be on the back foot next turn as well, no matter what I put in. So it's going to come down to this first round. If my rag can use the Magma Blast before he dies on on Malfurion, we might be okay. But if it doesn't go off and he dies to the to Guff's Bramble, we lose. Oh, are they not targeting rag? Oh, they have enough damage with the Bramble, sure. Okay, we got that off, which is nice. Wait, what the fuck? Oh, the fireball comes down last. Right, right, right. I was so confused. The muddy footing is what happened here. Okay. So our rag's gone. We lost the spell damage, but they've also lost Malfurion, so they don't, they don't have the ramp either. Now, if I remember correctly, I don't have any clue what's left in this comp, so kind of going in blind here. We can go Cairn or Lich King. Diablo, Diablo can come down as well. It might be Diablo. Diablo's got some damage here. They have two protectors, which is the unfortunate part. So I could go something like a Cairn, but Cairn dies pretty quickly to these guys. I could Lich King as well. So from their perspective, I also have two protectors, one green and one fighter on the bench. I think I'm still just supposed to ship Diablo. No, we're putting in Cairn, I lied. Set up the speed, and then after one more character dies, we can put in Diablo. Yeah, okay. So I could go for the Earth Stomp to slow them down, or I could just for endur I could just go for Endurance Aura and try to do some damage here. Now, the problem with Endurance Aura is that I don't think I actually have enough damage to kill the units, which means it doesn't do anything, because then next turn I have nothing to do. So I think I have to rely on the Earth Stomp this turn. And then just hope that next turn uh, we can get our own Diablo rolling. Now we're going to get rid of Guff or Brukhan. I think we want to get rid of Brukhan. This is the second round, so Brukhan can't use the Chain Lightning yet. I think we're going to do some damage here. Question is, what do we do here? Could go for a Living Bomb to do AoE damage. Could go for this. This is 18. This is 11. The problem with this is that... It's a bit slower, so it can go after Diablo, which could be problematic. So I could go for the safe Living Bomb, or I go for the sketchy Inferno. Let's go for the Living Bomb. And I have to reorder because ties on my side or uh, happen in the order in which I do stuff. There's the muddy footing, okay. Well, that sucks. Now, fortunately, nothing on my side died, 
But I didn't do anything either because the living bomb didn't go off. So that was another risk that I probably should have considered. Because they went for muddy footing, it slowed my Geddon's um, living bomb to the point where it just happened after all my damaging abilities happened. Now, I have speed advantage this turn, which is pretty important. Everything on their side of the board is three... Um, three speed slower so the fastest thing brucon can cast is at seven speed the fastest thing guff can cast is at six speed seven six and this is nine so i i should be able to seven six and nine i should be able to kill that by doing this this or i can focus the brucon instead you know what i should focus the brucon because they might go for the chain lightning before they die so we can do how much is this 16 damage Plus 18. 16 plus 18 is 34. Beautiful. Beautiful. And then, do we go for the hit there? Or do we go for taunt? We could go for taunt to protect the direct attack. Hmm. Do I want to get the damage in? I think I do want to get the damage in. Taunt protects if Diablo goes for attack, but they're going to expect I'm taunting, so they shouldn't go for attack here. So I should go for the attack because I'm going to get a heal, probably. Nice. Good heal, good heal. Clean up Brukan. Brambles comes down without a combo because Brukan died. But they do manage to snipe out one more thing. That's fine, though. It's 4v4 now, but I have a bit of an advantage here. Uh, their Diablo is quite low health. They should have, I believe, Lich King and Karen left over. No. They have Karen for sure. I know that. But if, I don't remember what else they have. Uh, now, do we go for our own Lich King here? I think we do. And then we'll we'll throw in Diablo next turn, not this turn. This turn we're going to stomp with Karen, so that next turn when we put in Diablo, if something dies, yeah, we can attack first with the uh, the fire AoE. Okay, so everything is normal speed at this point. Guff does not have any slowing abilities. Karen does, but it's for next turn. So what that means is I can Death Coil immediately, and then Diablo's just off the board. Am I okay with that? Do I want to do anything else? It's not efficient to do that. I'm pretty much always going for Earth Stomp this turn. I don't need to do anything else. And Earth Stomp also importantly kills Diablo before anything else happens, because Diablo's, only goes, uh, Diablo's abilities are only 6 speed. So I can use Frostbite or Death Coil on something else then, actually. So if we're doing 8 AoE, I can do another 16 damage, 24, and then go for Fireball. And that cleans up Guff as well. I kind of like that. Let's do that. I could go for the attack as well, actually. It's bad if Karen goes for Taunt. Oh, Karen might go for Taunt, actually. Uh-oh. Okay, change of game plans, because uh, this took way too long. For me to figure out. Because if they go for Karen Taunt, then they actually do get the Diablo off. Okay, we got Endurance Aura off. Nice. Now, the problem is this is bad if they go for the Taunt. Okay, they went for the Endurance Aura. Excellent. Nice. Okay, nice. We had the good read, and we won the coin flip by having our Taunt go first. Quite fortunate. I'm going to leave the positioning as is. If they have Lich King as their last unit... They don't. It's Kurtris. I actually don't know what Kurtris does. I beam, attack a random enemy, and attack an enemy. Okay. Uh, well, we're going for taunt. Uh, sorry, stomp. How fast is I beam? Six, five, three. That's fine. We should be able to get this off first. The problem is it doesn't kill. Is that fine? Do I just switch to a different target, or do I just go for the double kill on on Guff? I have the Avil on the bench, which is bad against two red. So I think I ignore Guff and just start doing damage to the other two units with um, with Antinus. And I think I ignore Karen and start doing damage to Kurtris. I think I go for the Death Coil here. Oh, you know what? I should have Death Coiled Guff. That was a mistake. Death Coil would have finished off Guff, and I did not realize that. Actually, wait, this might be fine. No, it's not fine. I should have death called Guff. Oh, I see. Oh, it becomes immune if it... I see, I see, I see. Okay, well, that's not very good for me. In fact, that's quite bad for me. 
All right, well, let's hope we get an attack off. Not much we can do. Now it's an Endurance or a Flip. See who can get the Taunt first. We are in an okay spot, though, because Diablo's going to come down next turn. And it's full health, so it should be able to clean up either Kurtris or... Um, yeah, I think they're just a little too far behind on health. We still have Reincarnation on our Cairn as well, so it, just be it becomes a battle of killing off the damage dealers. And we have just more damage dealers left over. Nice! What cool. we got here? Fire Three okay. casters, two fighters, and a protector. Okay. Let's go for a standard opening. I don't really know what this is. Caster Heavy makes it seem like it's... It could be Blade Master Zyrella type stuff. It could be some Holy back end. If they do have Blade Master Zyrella, it could be Shadow I've seen sometimes with three casters and two fighters. The Shadow Package, and then you have Sylvanas and Diablo as your two greens. Or Nature again. Okay. Um, two greens and a blue left over for Nature. That's interesting. So that's probably... Um, that is probably... Lady Anaconda, and then I don't know what the other one is. This is pretty straightforward. We're both going to nuke down the reds. And let's see who gets to go first. Or let's just hope we both... Yeah, okay. We get that attack off, which means Malfurion always dies. Perfect. Okay. So they have two greens and a blue left. I could put in Cairn here. It's a little scary, though. Um, because if they go for three blues and then just nuke my Cairn, it's a bit problematic. This is actually a pretty good time to get Diablo down. They don't have speed yet and it doesn't look like they'll have speed manipulation without reds on their bench so normally i would put in one of these two but i think i can just get diablo down and just start smorking i think that is the case i'm not afraid of diablo getting um type advantaged okay they go for anaconda makes sense try to kill off the red how fast is your ability it's five okay well let's just clean up rukan then I could go for the tack, but it's a little bad if Guff goes for Iron Bark, so I think I'm just going to go for the ranged Apocalypse. I could go for the Fire Stomp, but they all have abilities that are faster, so it doesn't seem very good right here. I think it's just important to get Brucon off the board to get rid of their nature scaling. Maybe it was better to get Karen down now that I'm thinking about it. I thought I could be cheeky, but now that I'm looking at the damage numbers, it doesn't seem that great. Hmm. Like, we do some damage here, but I don't think we do enough. Oh, really? I thought for sure Anaconda would be going for the type advantage on the blue. Okay. Well, we got the kill. Because, um... And Diablo's Apocalypse went up first. We were able to clean up with heating up, which did crit. Um, one of the benefits of uh, Apocalypse. Apo it's a slow spell, but it turns any damage into crits. Okay, so Samra's left over. It's probably Zyra left on the bench. Um, thing is, Tony's probably dead. If Tony's not dead, what do I want Tony to do? Actually, what did you do last turn? Did go for the Brambles, didn't go for the Taunt, okay. We could go for the Fire Stomp here. Try to win the 50-50, if we can outspeed Anaconda Serpent Bite, but it's going to be slower than that anyways. I might just want to go for a hit here. And just try to get damage out while we can. We could go for Living Bomb, our Fire Spells are a bit faster. But it's kind of weird. The thing is, this doesn't combo, so maybe we just go for another Heating Up. Living Bomb does a bit of AoE, but I don't think it's that important. And the thing is, if I Living Bomb, it's possible Diablo dies as well. So I think I do just go for Heating Up, and I'm just a little sad about it. Mirror Image goes for the Tony. That doesn't immediately kill. Oh, they wanted the flip on the Bram. Actually, no, there was no flip here. Oh! Okay, I didn't expect that. 
But I guess that makes sense. Ooh, I think I'm losing from here. I have red, red, blue against two blues left. Ooh, this is very bad. I think this might have panned out a bit differently if I put in Diablo later. Interesting. Interesting. And by interesting, I mean very bad for me. Well, I don't have fire stuff. We should be able to do Living Bomb here and get away with it. Hmm. Yeah, I'm in trouble. I can clean up this board. It's not super scary. The problem is there's a caster left, and then I have my two reds up against that, which isn't going to be very useful. Okay. Wait, really? They're going for an OTK on Lich King? It's a little surprising to me. I guess they just don't respect Geddon. Yeah, I guess that makes sense, though. Geddon just doesn't do anything by himself. He needs some fire combo to get going. Okay, it is Irela left over. So these are three slower. Actually, no, no, no. Wait, did the stomp go off before the immunity? It did. So Samuro is three slower. Mirror image costs six. I could go for a punch. Punching this is actually huge. And it's more likely he goes for double strike. He could go for image though, which would be a little scary. The thing is I do need him off the board, so we're gonna do that anyways. Um, unfortunately, Lich King's just gonna die because Zyrella's uh, gift is, Binding Limits is three. So I could go for a taunt instead to try and get Lich King's ability off, but I don't think that's actually worth it. I think it's better just to make sure Samuro gets off the board and then we might, ugh, I don't think we have a chance though. It's just so, the Zyrella is gonna be the end of me. She's just going to out-heal my Karen late game. Hmm. I mean, we can try. I don't think it's going to work. I mean, Zyrell immediately nukes down Lich King. And this is only a 50-50 to save Lich King. And even if I do heal myself, yeah, it's just not worth it. Just in case. Uh, okay, I did not pick the right ability, but the game lagged, so... Unlucky? Yep. That's wonderful. By wonderful, I mean awful. Yeah, I don't think we can win from here. We can clean up these two, but I think Karen against Zyrella 1v1, I think Zyrella wins... She just does too much damage. Like, she just spams Blinding Luminance, and then I just never do enough damage because there's no attack left over for Karen. So even if I do clean up both uh, Samuro... So would I actually have gotten a clear if I didn't do that? I dealt 8, but I could have dealt 11. I would have dealt 3 more. It wouldn't have mattered. Hmm. Yeah, I think from the... I don't know. I'm not sure if I could have won this. Yeah, the, the main decision point was maybe putting in Diablo over putting in Diablo over one of my uh, protectors. If I started putting Karen down first, maybe the speed advantage I gained there would have been worth it. It probably would have been actually, right? Yeah, yeah. I think that was my mistake. I thought I could get cheeky and throw in Diablo. And Diablo did get a kill, but I think speed control was probably more important. Uh, I can leave from here. All right. I mean, it was still interesting. Haven't seen that sort of lineup before. Um, so it's kind of cool. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed those games. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And see you next time.